Hey everyone, welcome into the Guilty as Charged podcast. Today we're going to talk about some Senior Bowl recap. It just seems like it's the Chargers Wire crossover episode all week this week. Steven was just on with one guy. I'm on here with Gavino now. We're just crossing over and Gavino was at the Senior Bowl. So we're going to pick his brain a bit about some of these interior defensive linemen and edge guys that were at the Senior Bowl. And to do that, we're going to go through the Draft Network's mock draft simulation and just look at different guys at different points of the draft to see you know, someone that the Chargers should be looking for, where you can get these guys and all that. But we're just focusing on senior bowl guys, interior defensive linemen, edge rushers. Gavino, thanks for joining me, man. How are you and how was the senior bowl? I'm doing good, man. Um, the senior bowl was a lot of fun. Um, you know, there was only two days of practice because we had some right. rain on day three. So we were restricted to um, only, you know, media members. You know, I was kind of some, some questionable people in there that were able to, <laughs> to get to, to get in, but we were forced to uh, just watch the the tape. So I'm grateful that we had access to that throughout the week. Um, you know, that you guys were able to, to get to that too. So to be able to follow along throughout the week, um, even if you weren't there, was was cool. I'm glad that they had that, that resource. But um, other than that, I had a a canceled flight and I was supposed to leave on Thursday oh. night and wasn't able to make it back because again, weather issues and then yeah. what should have been be, you know, being back on Saturday morning here in Phoenix turned to Sunday morning because of uh, mechanical issues. And then I, there was a, fl- um, a plane that was overbooked. So they kept me in Dallas Saturday night, was able to get back on uh, Sunday morning. So all in all, it, it was a good week and just being able to connect with people on, that you know i connect with on twitter and just be able yeah. to talk to talk to others and just watch ball so all things considered it was a good week <clears throat> no that sounds great all the weather all the delays it's worth it it's a better story before we jump into this real fast i do want you to be able to talk about one well if you want to one player that you talked to that has met with the chargers i haven't seen her brought it up anywhere else so do you want to mention who that was and, and what you talked to him about yeah, so I met with um, Verone McKinley. So he was there for a couple practices. Um, he ended up going home, so he didn't participate in the mm-hmm. Senior Bowl game. I know some people were probably looking forward to, to watching him, but he ended up going back uh, home. So he's residing in Dallas, and he's training with Exos to get ready for the Combine. So mm-hmm. he didn't go all the way back to Oregon, so he's just in Dallas. And um, he told me that he met with the Chargers on two occasions. So he met with them at the Senior Bowl and he's had a uh, phone interview with them. So mm. I figured if he's met with the team twice, that's that's promising stuff. Yeah. And at the same time, you know, even before he told me that, it doesn't surprise me at all um, because I feel like the Chargers, one, you know, cornerback um, talent and depth altogether is a necessity this offseason. Yeah. And same, same thing with safety, the safety mm-hmm. position too. I feel like that's a position that we don't talk about as much but you know in my opinion i just think that the chargers need more playmakers in the secondary altogether. you know this Mm -hmm. isn't a a defense uh, led by gus bradley where it's so strict (laughs) you know he has certain types of cornerbacks and safeties that um, fit his defense i feel like with with brandon staley and just type of defense you run he just you know needs and and like wants playmakers back there Mm -hmm. and a guy like mckinley being so versatile you know manning the uh free high safety uh, or the single high safety role, sorry. And then, you know, um, a split zone and, um, you know, uh, and then also being able to like man the slot as well. Like he was a do it all defensive back for um, Oregon. That's why he got the uh, nickname, the, the general. So he's done with that. And uh, again, a guy that's led the nation or was tied for, you know, in the nation with interceptions with six this past season, like the production is there and he's a great player. And uh, Mm -hmm. again, he was a guy that I would strongly consider drafting even in the second round. Like he's the idea of like Mm. a playmaker, like very, you know, not might not be the biggest 5'11", 198, but he can man all spots and it would allow other players in the secondary to do a lot more different things. And especially like Nasir Adderley too. Um, But then just, I feel like behind them, you know, we talk about Alohi Gilman, Mark Webb too. Uh, Gilman shows some flashes. Obviously, he was out, and then Mark Webb, you know, he had the injury too. But all in all, we talked about this defensive line. They need more guys, but at the same time, you have to look at the se- secondary and consider um, the need for just more play- playmakers back there. Yeah, they definitely need more playmakers, and they're certainly looking for it. In the last couple of days, it's it's the third. They've not met with three different safeties, like safety corner hybrid. So they're definitely looking for something there. You want, you know, maybe Gilman to be able to do that, or Mark Webb. I think they were really high on. 
but you can't also rely on those guys either. You got to do your homework and maybe find someone. And, you know, if they drop to third round, fourth round, fifth round, they have four seventh round picks. Do your homework at each level to figure out if there's a guy here you can kind of fit in. All right. So let's jump into the trenches. I know that's definitely your favorite thing. I did start this draft already. And big senior bowl riser, Jermaine Johnson, already went eighth to the Falcons. Um, you know, so we're going to go through this board, talk about some of the guys that were taken. But now we're here at 17. And, you know, I'll, I'll go through the edge rusher guys, the interior defensive line guys, and see if there's anyone that you're interested in or that you want to bring up. So feel free to stop me, pause, whatever. Cut me off, whatever you need. Okay. So when looking at the board right there, um, you have a couple senior bowl guys. You have Cameron Thomas and you have mm -hmm. Logan Hall and then King, Kingsley um, Eneg Barre. I always butcher his name a little bit. <laughs> um, with the top guys, Trevon Walker, George um, Karloftis, and mm -hmm. they weren't there. So when you're looking at senior bowl guys only, you know, Cameron Thomas and Logan mm -hmm. Hall, who um, <clears throat> when just – Evaluating their tape because I've, I've watched their tape and then just yeah. the senior bowl performances. The one guy that I could see in first round consideration, <clears throat> Logan Logan Hall, mm -hmm. stands out to me. Um, so he's going to be a guy where he could play uh, inside and outside. And again, I feel like that versatility is um, you know very crucial, especially for a team like the the Chargers where. Brandon Staley, you know, you see what he did with Joey Bosa by putting him inside and outside too. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's what they need is more guys that can do, you know, because if you're able to get a, a guy who might be like considered on the lighter side um, on the interior uh, of the line, but yeah. he's, you know, quicker um, to beat these guards, like, you know, why not go for a guy? And one that just, uh, you know, again, wasn't at the senior bowl, but really stands out to me as an edge defender who I want at 17 is, is Trevon Walker. Um, mm -hmm. who kind of fits that role and again you know since we're talking primarily just senior bowl guys like here i feel like you know looking at hall thomas um it might be a bit of a reach yeah. but at the same time um you know a guy like hall would be able to you know supply that versatility to play inside and outside and uh again hold his own against the uh the pass and, and the run so you know just basically get into the backfield because the way that he he does so is is an intriguing way um you know he's got some pass rush moves to him um mm -hmm. the way he's good at lateral agility to beat um you know tackles and, and guards alike but uh yeah. yeah here i wouldn't say that the value is uh is that great by taking one of these guys right. other than uh trevon walker and i don't know if you want to to go on that tangent if you want to make it just solely senior bowl guys because again we can go um to interior defensive linemen and see if uh any of the guys stand out so here, um, you know, we don't see Jordan Davis. <laughs> that, <obviously, No. laughs> that, that, that stands out. So he's gone. Yeah. Again, right there. He, he went to the Browns. So a guy like Devontae Wyatt, um, and I was talking to Tyler right before the show, uh, he reminds me of Kenny Clark coming out of UCLA. Again, you know, I, I don't like to do comparisons or anything like that. And people are like, oh, like he's not the same, like, dominant player that, uh, you know, Kenny Clark is for the Packers now. But right. um, all things considered in terms of how he's able to get into the backfield with the quickness, the lateral agility, like he has a lot of juice to him. And again, he's a guy that I would say is, is balanced against the the pass and the run. Mm -hmm. He's not more dominant than one or the other, but at the same time, like that could be a sneaky selection with, with 17 because, um, you know, they need that interior pass rush too. And again, we're stuck on just defending the run, but the Chargers did not have that um, interior pass rush. I think Jerry Tillery led the team with uh, with quarterback pressures, I believe. And uh, again, they just need more of that. And we talk about the uh, edge defenders being able to be more productive. And again, it starts with that. And you need someone that's going to be able to to get in the backfield, collapse the pocket. Of course, you know Jordan Davis could do that, but again, I don't see like much pass rush value and, and for me i really um take like pride like with the defensive tackles if they can also get after the the quarterback so Devonte white is definitely someone that is able to do just that um other guys that stand out so when we have it pulled up here we have winfrey mm -hmm. winfrey it was obviously a clear winner from the the senior bowl 
but his tape was left, you know, a mixed bag of, of reviews mm. because we, if we're thinking, you know, Jerry Tillery a little bit, this is a guy that's going oh. to get up the field, like with upfield quickness. Um, he's going to beat guard centers um, to the spot, but mm. he, the anchor against the run wasn't there like on film. Mm. So a lot of the stuff yeah. that we would see from Jerry Tillery, like he just didn't have his own, be able to like hold his own at the point of attack and he would just get washed out of place. So that kind of scares me a little bit, you know, uh, <laughs> yeah. again, a guy that uh, didn't show the ability to stop the run on, you know, in college, of course he looked um, better at the senior bowl. And that's the thing with the senior bowl. Um, it makes you go back and, and watch the tape. And, and I did, that was the first player that I did, but at the same time, like I honed in on Winfrey because I thought the flashes were, were real. And I thought that this might be a guy for the chargers, but at the same time, He's definitely good um, with rushing the passer, but in regards to like stopping the run, it's mm. if he gets into the backfield. You know, when guards oh, okay. and centers get their yeah. hands on him, um, you know, that's going to be it for him for the most part, like um, majority of the time. So yeah. Winfrey's a guy that I see being a second round pick despite um, having a good week at the the Senior Bowl. So um we'll the, let, we'll make a pick and then try to get to the second round at this point so you don't have to keep okay. extending to massive reaches at this point based on no. their board yeah i think comparing an interior defensive lineman to jerry tillery is the quickest way to get chargers fans out of that uh, idea overall uh if it's like that i haven't watched him i only saw him again he flashed quite a bit at the senior bowl i believe he was someone who i think long-armed trevor penning and lifted him off of his feet i think that was him uh so it was a, it was a pretty good you know week for him but if the film looks like that, then Again, I don't know. you know he's going to come off the ball well. But as far as yeah. like his leg drive, it's just it's too inconsistent. And mm -hmm. then I had issues with the the anchor in the run game. Like um, on tape, it seemed like his hand placements um, mm -hmm. that needed work. So he came into the Senior Bowl, and obviously he was a guy that had um, something to prove, and he did. But at the same mm -hmm. time, you can't just like justify a player off of their of showing course. at the Senior Bowl and say mm -hmm. like, oh, he, he's the guy, he's a first rounder. Like this isn't. <laughs> doesn't work that right. way so if we're going back to the the board um forget the senior bowl because they're i think they're all in more of the second round range at this point so who just you can pick whoever you want doesn't have to be the senior bowl you have at it although i feel like i already know who you want to go with so yeah i'm, I'm going i know you see jameson williams uh williams right there but i'm gonna go trevon walker and mm. um i include him in the uh in my mock draft um my most recent one Again, we talked about that versatility to play inside and outside, and Trevon Walker supplies that. He's got the get off. Um, he's got a little bend uh, to get around the corner, you know, through gaps. He has the strength and length to be able to to um, push um, blockers into the backfield. Not only that, but he's strong against the run, so he's got the anchor to hold his ground at the point of attack, and he's good as a tackler. That's also important, you know. A la Jerry Tillery. So, you know, he had his <laughs> he had his times where yeah. he'd get in the backfield, but he just wouldn't put finish plays. But I would say he's at his strongest um, against the run. And that's something that the, the team needs. But at the same time, he's able to supply that that mm. pass rush and what you can do. I mean, you see how with Bosa putting him outside and inside, like I think that, you know, they could benefit from that versatility. Again, if they've got the mm -hmm. the, the strength um, and the speed to beat blockers, like Come on, you can't go wrong with it. And with Walker, he's probably one of the stronger um, edge defenders against the run. So I'm mm -hmm. taking Walker. It may not be a sexy pick. I know you're probably thinking like corners or whatever right there. Um, yeah. Big Trent McDuffie fan um, too in this uh, system. But I'm going Walker. Again, you don't see him mocked. You haven't heard him pegged to the, the Chargers um, as much. But you know, I'm here to kind of break that mold and hopefully yeah. get some people on the, the Trevon Walker to the Chargers train at a uh, right. No, that's great. Player. Everyone's talking, you know, Jermaine Johnson, Jermaine Johnson, and, and rightfully so. But, you know, there are other players <laughs> in this draft, too. Uh, where did oh, Penning went fifth overall? OK, so I don't know if Trevor Penning's going to go fifth overall to the Giants. Um, I was wondering where he it's went. It's the Giants. The so. <laughs> exactly. Um, I guess then I want to just ask you real quick, because we are kind of in that range at 17 where the Chargers could have taken an offensive tackle. I know we're not going to talk about them that much on this video but how did that that trio of the big three of the second tier look to you and just did anyone really separate themselves in a positive way or are you still just kind of like meh about all of them or how do you feel about this group in terms of the uh, of being uh, picking them at 17 
Uh, with which group? Um, which oh, stream? sorry. So uh, Penning, Raymond, and Falele. So <clears throat> with with Penning, it seemed like it, it took him a little bit to get into some groove. And again, this is a guy that was playing, you know, primarily small school edge defenders. And again, it, it all stands out. He's got that Mauler's mentality. We saw it um, on film. He's going to put guys on the ground. Everyone wants that mean streak to, to their um, their offensive lineman. He definitely um, showed that, and I think it was to some a bit much. And uh, <laughs> yeah. the other crowd where they really, you know, ate that type of stuff. Uh, but you could see the athleticism, you could see the movement skills. But at the same time, in terms of just like his own at the the point of attack, he was getting uh, bullied a, a couple mm -hmm. times, and he was getting pushed into the backfield by some of these these edge defenders. And again, it took him a little bit to get settled, but at the same time, I feel like you can kind of draw some like question marks in regards to that. Um, as far as Raymond, I didn't really uh, spend too much time on. Um, mm -hmm. Again, I got the senior bowl tape, so that's the guy that I'm going to go back to. And yeah. then with, uh, with Falele again, you know, when I first saw him, like he was the one that, that stood out, you know, when you're that size, six, eight, mm -hmm. shoot, pushing, 400 pounds close to it you know you're going to have this like physically imposing stature and and that did um and for his size to see that type of athleticism it's definitely um you know eyebrow raising but mm -hmm. at the same time with him um there were times where he would get pushed into yeah. the backfield as well and um you know i'm gonna leave him as a anonymous scout um, that i was able to talk to at the airport oh. he's a guy on the uh the softer side like you have to, you know, get yeah. him to, to toughen up. And when you, I mean, you look at his face and like everything, he looks like one of those guys that, you know, you sure he's a big dude, but like he, you need to kind of like light a, light a fire, fire under his ass, like get him going and to be able to like play with that mean streak, not necessarily like on the level of like Trevor uh, Penning or anything like that, but just to get him like going. And again, when I heard that, I'm like, okay, it does make sense. And uh, you can kind of see like, even for his size, you'd think that, no, he could, he could he can hold his own at the point of attack, but when he's getting like pushed by some of these like smaller edge defenders too, you're like, okay, like you know, for a guy that's getting this much like buzz, like that's definitely concerning. And you look at the league, and you have these guys that are so much stronger too. So um, something like that, you know, draws some concern to a certain extent. I feel like so. Yeah, no, definitely not the most outstanding group a so lot maybe of not like the, the, the perfect week um for like yeah. all tackles i feel like they had their their uh their highs and lows but mm -hmm. you know penning he he certainly settled in and um, mm -hmm. i think he should be a first rounder Falele, yeah. i feel like he's fringe like he could be round one or round two mm -hmm. maybe the back end of round one and then you know in that second round so yeah yeah i i do say like i will say you know <laughs> Falele going to the packers would be almost best case scenario for him you know, if you go yeah. one pick later to the Dolphins, he's going to be a bust. One pick earlier, you know, to, to the Packers. That's a team that doesn't have a, a right tackle, you know. Yeah. Um, no, potential but... charger, uh, Dennis Kelly. <laughs> is uh, <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Is be, be gone, so they're be looking for that right tackle spot, and he's definitely a fit. Yeah, look at that. Logan Hall falling. Logan Hall was impressive because uh, Winfrey went to the Ravens, so he'll be very good. All right, so at this point, we are at the round two spot. Um, one thing I will say, oh, yeah, of course, everyone's going to want to talk about this guy. Um, that's probably the pick if he's there. But I will say one thing about Devontae Wyatt that I did notice or someone brought it up to me was that he had a bit of a run in with kicking a girlfriend's door down at a dorm and, and causing damage. I don't know if that's enough to take him off the Chargers board. The Chargers were the charges were dropped. But you know how the Chargers are. It's it's like clean or not i know they definitely do their homework when it comes to prospects and as long as telesco is the gm like we really can't expect a, a prospect with any yeah. kind of dirt under their yeah. name so yeah which does you know obviously limit what they can do and if you i mean fortunately but at the same time we look back to the draft where jerry tillery was taken the, the, the guy that's the most uh stomped on someone's head <laughs> yeah exactly no so. he, he was supposed to be the most like dirty player that telesco has taken and you know maybe uh should have gone with a cleaner player i don't know all right so the obvious one interior defensive lineman here is travis jones i personally did not know who he was before this i didn't look at interior defensive lineman much before this outside of jordan davis and then Steven for weeks 
was like Jordan, you know, Travis Jones, Travis Jones, Travis Jones. And they go into the senior bowl and just is arguably one of the biggest winners of the weekend. So, you know, Travis Jones right here, talk about him. I mean, is, is, is it a good fit for the chargers here? I'm assuming at this point. Yeah. Like it, it's yeah. definitely <laughs> like a, a really good fit. And, you know, for a lot of the, the people that want, uh, Jordan Davis in, in round one, again, I don't know why you're, you still continue to think that when there's definitely value um, elsewhere. Yeah. Travis Jones is a, is a guy that, you know, really good frame, like wide I and mean, he has a length. So, you know, wide, wide body stout at the point of attack. He's able to take on double teams. He's able to push blockers uh, back into the backfield. You know, he's, he uses his length really well, mm -hmm. but he also has some like twitchiness to his rush. Um, he does. And then also he uses his hands really, really well. And this is a guy where again you're gonna probably get better like really really good value um mm -hmm. you know in round two and you don't need to take a, a nose tackle but he was a guy that i saw as a ideal third round pick coming into it but okay. with him making so much money like he pushed himself <laughs> into that, that round two consideration i think he's a top 50 player and if he's still on the board which again i think there's gonna be a, a good chance you know especially with like the nose tackle position and everything um right I think he is like a solid fit uh, for the Chargers in round two. Yeah. And like sounds... Let's say they go like corner or like edge, you know, heck even right tackle and in, in round one um, or wide wide receiver, they, uh, they can go into round two. And if Jones is on the board, I don't see how you don't take him. Mm -hmm. No, it seems like the smart way to go at this point, kind of like, I don't know, like I guess back with Jerry Tillery, it's like we had a bunch of safeties that could go right in that round two spot that they could have taken uh, whether it was Abram or Thornhill, they went with Adderley that year. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like they could play the interior defensive line the same way this year and take, you know, Jones, Mathis, whoever it is. Um, so Jones is a nose tackle? Yeah. Okay. Yep. I, I wasn't sure, so I haven't watched him. He's going to be, like, really good from uh, the zero to, to three technique, in, in my opinion. But at the same okay. time, I mean, I feel like a lot of teams wouldn't be surprised to put him at – that um, zero to, to just one yeah. technique, but I think you can slide him over to the, to the three technique. He, he showed oh. a lot, um, put him in one of those spots and he's going to do really well at the, the next level. And for a team like the chargers to be able to get him in the second round, I think that's a, that's a big win. Yeah. Huge win. Him. But if they don't get him, how's the Federian Mathis looking? I know that's a guy you put in your mock drafts before. Have you changed yeah. your mind on him at all? No, I haven't. Cause uh, I resort back to, to the tape. And of, of course, yeah. you know, since he didn't have, like one of the better performances in uh, in Mobile, it doesn't change what like, what what I saw on tape. And mm -hmm. with, with with Mathis, um, again, he's a guy that he he has some length. He's got the hands. He's got the lower body strength, some lateral agility, and just to you know be able to anchor. He's a guy that can uh, defend the run really really well, but also uh, apply interior pressure. And um, for me, I see him as like a guy that can be like you know a starter from like the get go, um, be able to plug him into the lineup. And, uh, nice. again, like for him to, to be able to put together that senior season, um, you know, it was one of the, the better tapes that I watched. Um, and just, okay. I feel like, nice. I think I talked about this the last time we were together. Like it's like the yeah. ideal, um, like Brandon Steele, like interior defensive lineman. Um, mm. you kind of see like in that mold of like, Christian Covington and I and I really okay. kind of specify like how he likes his interior defender. So again, you know, there's like the the bigger guys like Travis Jones, and then you have like the the length and strength guys, and then you have like the tweeners, a la Draymond Jones. So he's got yeah. certain flavors uh, to his interior defensive linemen. So it's not just like one or the other. And I think you know we see guys like Travis Jones and think like nose tackles is, is the way to go. Like, you know, there are other certain types of um, interior defensive linemen that he does seem to um, favor as well, or like that kind mm -hmm. of fit his uh, system. And that's what it's all about too. And yeah. like with, uh, with Mathis, you know, he can kind of fit that role and maybe so like the, the length and strength type of type of guy and uh, be able to, you know, like I said, defend the run really well, but also apply uh, interior pressure. Um, nice. So you can throw on yeah. some of the Alabama tape, and uh, you'll you'll be able to to see that. So don't necessarily look at just the Senior Bowl week and right. put them off your uh, you know radar. So yeah, definitely don't wasn't my that. favorite week from a player. I was not super impressed, but then like you said, go back to the tape. That's what matters more. Yeah. As far as edge in this group, you've got a couple of guys. I won't make you pronounce his name again. Kingsley <laughs> Enigbare or whatever. 
it, it's proof that I don't watch YouTube highlights, or that we don't watch YouTube highlights, that we can't pronounce most of these guys' names because uh, we just watch All-22 with no noise. So uh, Exactly. So Kingsley is a guy that I see as a, um, like, not going to lie, I see him as a, as a round three guy. But, again, okay. you know, of course, he, he performed well at the, at the senior bowl. He's a guy that has some, like, length. He's got like a mm. 35 inch arms and uh, he's a primarily like a length and strength type of guy. And that's what I saw on tape from him. Mm. But it seemed like he was able to, to show more variety, dig into that toolbox and be able to, okay. to beat offensive tackles with, I saw a, a cross chop against um, Max Mitchell. Um, mm -hmm. okay. And again, he, there's an, uh, an intriguing stat to him. He, I think he finished with the highest pass rush win rate among SEC defensive oh. linemen, like 25.8%. And okay. again, that certainly stands out because, um, you know, while defending the run is important, they need that, um, that pass rush. So, um, yeah, sorry. No, you're yeah, good. They need, no, they, they need that pass rush. And, um, again, at the same time, like you see, he's got the length and that's something Brandon Staley, you know, check off the, the, the box <laughs> there, but same time, the yeah. explosiveness, it's not always there. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, we're going to get into some of these edge defenders who I really like uh, as potential uh, round three guys and um, I'm sure others that stand out in, in round two. But, like, I wouldn't say um, Eneg Barre is a – would be, like, a fit for the, uh, for the Chargers. Okay. okay. So. Good to know. Good to know. So I think at this point, it seems pretty obvious that we are going to be taking, in this scenario, Travis Jones. I think we built ourselves one heck of a, of a defensive line. So not bad so far going with Walker and Jones. We'll let these guys roll through. I'm curious who you're thinking of in round three. Some guys that would probably go into round two potentially. Um, we'll, we'll talk about who was taken because I think you might miss some guys. So uh, it's up to you. Do you want to go with, well, let's go with the guys that were drafted. So is there anybody in this group, you know, whether it's edge, interior defensive line, or just anybody? Non, 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 non senior bowl player. Um, actually, yeah. no, um, Drake Jackson, he's a guy okay. that I feel like he's a, he's a little raw, but he's an intriguing um, edge defender to me. He mm. was pretty productive at, at, at USC, but I won't go too much into him. Uh, Okay. Mijai Sanders, he's a guy that, that stands out. He had a pretty good week. He had some some flashes, but um, at the same time, there were times where he was just completely taken out of plays. But at the same yeah. time, you look at a as an athlete, he's got the explosiveness, uh, has the length, and just like kind of the physical set of tools um, to uh, to be able to contribute uh, at the next level at mm -hmm. the position. He's a guy that, that stands out to me, and he was on my radar dating back to to last year so that, that's a fit oh, right wow, there okay. with, with with sanders yeah and then evocating was there as well right yep he was taken right there too wow. and, and again i i feel like he is going to be a guy that's that's a fit right there for the for the chargers too yeah and yeah he was another guy that had his highs and lows as well but um mm -hmm. i really liked his tape and especially with how he wins inside absolutely like, yeah mm -hmm. No, he's got, it, it's he's legit. got some fun tape, and again, that's why I just I like the edge defender position. I love you know evaluating that that you know those yeah. players, you know, like how they win, and again, just like how he was able to to get inside and just set up blockers. Like it was just a lot of fun, and I feel like he's going to be pretty productive at the next level too. Or just like how he brings his like flavor, you know, on the field and mm. he's able to mm -hmm. get in the backfield. So he's uh, yeah. definitely a potential fit for the Chargers too. Mm -hmm. Was that so? Either those guys, Ebiketti or Sanders, or even Sanders Jackson. and Ebiketti. Yeah. Okay. And honestly, I think all three of those, to be honest, would be fine as a Charger. Let's say mm -hmm. they go a different direction <clears throat> in uh, round one. All three of yeah. those guys. Okay. Cool. No, I like that. I, I mean, I, I just started watching Ebiketti, and like you said, his ability to win inside it's it's frequent. It's fantastic. Um, he can bend and work to the outside as well, but him be able to work inside outside. And I believe this is only his first season at Penn State. He worked with Toledo, if I'm not mistaken, before that. So for him to step in and be like that, unless that was Mafe. No. Advocate is the one from Temple, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. Not Toledo. I was going to say Temple. Or Temple, whatever. Yeah. T-School, not T -school. Penn State. <laughs> Something like that. Okay. So let's talk about some of these guys in round three. I don't know who's available at this point or who was actually at the... I know Ridgeway was there. Otito is a little far down. 
if there's anybody in particular we can talk about it otherwise we can just go ahead, go ahead move on click on edge um yeah, yeah there, there's that there's one guy right there and that's yes um Malfe. and i feel like mm-hmm. you have to we have to be able to talk about him because he had himself uh, a hell of a week mm. um he, he was a guy who i actually liked coming into the senior bowl and i think i, I made a tweet about him probably a few weeks prior to, and I talked about him being of that mold that Brandon mm. Staley likes the position with the explosiveness, um, but also the length too. But just, I loved his way, how he was able to, to set up blockers. Um, you know, if one thing didn't work, he was able to transition mm. to the next. And again, um, he showed length, he showed power, he showed some, uh, you know, body control. Um, he was able to show some some flexibility. So he he did it all. Like he dug into the yeah. toolbox and showed a lot. And again, I think in the game he had what two sacks, strip sack, I believe. I so. Yeah, he had a really good game. So he took what he did in practice, and he took it into or took from practice and took it into the game. And again, we we're all able to see like what he had been doing all week. Um, he's a guy after the combine that I think is going to be a top mm-hmm. 50 pick because he's going to yeah. jump out of the, jump out of the gym. A team's going to fall in love with the athleticism, but also just the traits um, mm-hmm. because uh, the only thing that I would say is on tape is uh, defending the run. It was kind of a, yeah, yeah. Mix, mix, yeah. mix bag for sure. But mm-hmm. in terms of like pass rush, like he, he's got it. So no, he's, yeah, he's definitely got some juice. He's he, the first play I watched of him was against Michigan and his first play that he had was a sack. He speed to power walks the tackle back to quarterback, quarterback bails, and he just chases him down. And I immediately yeah. looked up his, it, did he, you know, did he run track? Did he run track? Did he track and field? And of course he competed in like seven different events. So yeah. he, he's a total athletic freak. And I could absolutely see somebody gambling on him for sure. Especially here in the third round, that wouldn't be a bad call. Um, so of the, of these guys, yeah, Mafe is <laughs> Daniel Jeremiah called him, a first round talent. I don't know if he'll be a first round pick, um, but we'll see what kind of uh, see where he goes. But yeah, like you said, the combine. I I would say like with him being, yeah, a top 50 pick for sure. Um, Yeah. Another guy that stands out to me um, again, I would even put him under that first round talent is uh, Mm -hmm. is Sam Williams from um, Ole Miss. But the only thing is he's not going to be on the chargers board. I think he was suspended. He had a a charge with with the sexual battery. Oh, so that. I just said no, but I mean, um, <laughs> he's got some juice and we talk about variety with the pass rush and just being able mm. to win with like speed and all that. So he, he possesses a lot, but as far as the character issues, um, again, yeah. they're, they're there. And I, I think that he's a guy that they would charge would just pass on yeah. altogether. So Mafe okay. stands out, um, as that round three guy, uh, Tyreek Smith or Isaiah Thomas. I feel like that's too soon. And then go ahead right. and go back, um, to interior defensive lineman. Okay. Um, Ridgeway later, if you want. Yeah, we could talk about them later. Um, okay. one guy that I will point out, uh, who made himself money at the Shrine Bowl. And I, you know, hmm. if you go back to my tweets, Matthew Butler, he, he's a yeah. guy that I would, would take in round three. He's probably one of my favorite round three targets. So mm-hmm. again, he's, he doesn't weigh over, maybe he will like slightly over 300 pounds at the combine. He's not going to be your, your nose tackle. But again, the way that he's able to, you know, um, apply interior pressure, getting after the quarterback, uh, he can go with power. He can go with speed. He has some violent hands, too. Um, He's a guy that, you know, you can line him up at multiple spots and he's going to find a way to uh, not only uh, impact the passer, but also defend Mm -hmm. the run where he's at his strongest. And um, I was able to interview him. I'll have a. Oh, okay, cool. Up on that too, um, to kind of introduce Matthew Butler because he's definitely flying under the radar. But mm-hmm. I was asking about his um, pass rush moves and who he watched, and he in specific, like I didn't say anything. He said the Bosa brothers, and especially with the oh. side scissor, the side scissor move that yeah, um, okay, that Bosa uses, and that's what he's um, notorious right. for. Like he um, wow. highlighted that, so that that stood out to me because he re- he went into depth about it um mm. and he's so he's a guy shrine bull guy but um he's probably one of my favorite round three targets um depending on like how many interior defensive linemen or how soon they want to take them consecutively i don't know but right he's a he's a guy for sure so yeah, yeah. now i'm hearing I, good things about him i think brett coleman ej snyder first pointed him out to me I, again i haven't really jumped into this group all that much but I think when, when you like when you and anyone else gets to uh 
Tennessee tape and just to watch Butler. Yeah. I think you guys are going to really like his tape and uh, okay. see him as a potential day two target. It really just seems like so many guys in this class are able to win with speed and with power and with this or that, and they're all angry and violent. There seems to seem like a such great depth, you know, from like rounds two to three. In this I mean, class we, so we, we saw it at the Senior Bowl too. Like that yeah. was probably the best position group, and that's why it should be exciting for you know us and the rest of the mm-hmm. Chargers fans because there's you know um, a lot of guys in here that can supply you know. Um, the ability to to come in and uh, contribute from from day one, whether you're a starter or you're a, a depth player, and mm-hmm. uh, I think that can be found from you know r- round one to uh, to day three, like just later on. So that's why I'm excited. You know, for a position group that was considered to be you know not as great or not as deep, um, I think the Senior Bowl was able to spotlight some of these guys oh, that yeah. are uh, that just flew under the radar and uh, one that will you know hopefully get to if he's available still. You know, you okay. can kind of let's say, um, so let's go back to Edge. Let's take okay. Moffy. All right, let's go. Incredible rotation here. We're <laughs> all in on the trenches. It's going to be a fantastic defense. Hopefully, they have right tackle solved already. <laughs> so, <laughs> otherwise, you know, right tackle corner, yeah. maybe. Yeah, you know, <laughs> some of those positions. But we're building the trenches right now. So, yes, so we have one heck of a trench four. group here. Okay, let's talk about some of the guys that did go. I know you mentioned Thomas. I'm um, it being a little too early for him. Now it's one pick too late. And that's a that's a guy that I didn't get to to watch as much. Uh, okay. I didn't have under the the microscope. Again, there's Matthew Butler to the to the so Jets, close. but a Shrine Bowl yeah. guy. Um, let's see. See a lot of a lot of corners here. Mm-hmm. Tyreek Smith again. I have him like as a, as a round four guy. I didn't really get to to watch okay. him as much. So yeah, I see a lot of corners, not that many edge or interior defensive linemen that were taken there. So mm-hmm. okay, sounds good. We are a little closer to some guys you want to talk about. I think I know who it is. Um, so go ahead and scroll down. He's he's going later, like two hundred, isn't he? Is it Neil Farrell? Yeah. Yeah. He, okay. He, he, he is, but. I, I like him like at the very top of four. I would even consider taking him at round three. And I know mm-hmm. I see a lot of Chargers mock drafts floating around Twitter. <laughs> and he's yeah. definitely a popular one uh, round six. But I right. think it's because I'm a lot higher than him. Um, mm-hmm. Not only like what he showed at the Senior Bowl, but it was like what he showed like um, from the LSU tape. Yeah. And again, he's a guy um, – who's going to be known for his ability to, to defend the run. So he's, he's got the, the, got good size. Doesn't have as um, much length as these other guys, but mm-hmm. um, the strength and just be able to, and then the discipline, he's going to be a guy that's going to be that space eater in the middle. Um, yeah. At the same time, he's got some upside from a pass rush uh, standpoint. We're able to see that at the, at the senior bowl too. Um, his leverage, he was able to get underneath blockers and push them back to uh, really good flexibility to kind of contort his body around. And obviously that the lower body strength to just uh, continue to drive um, up the field and then as well as uh, the extension too. So he's a guy that, you know, <laughs> I would consider a round three. He's going to be mm. a top eight interior defensive. Ta- uh, okay. Defensive wow. Defensive. So it might be hot take or whatever, but um, I think he, he was a standout at the Senior Bowl. Um, but I feel like I think we're seeing these boards like this, how they're how they're set up, and yeah, you know, they're reliable and all. But this is just kind of like how I see, of it course, like how how I have him graded. So while he's down here in the two hundreds or whatever, um, he's uh, to me he's a round three or a round four guy, and he's a guy that can come in and, and help, uh, especially against the run right away. Yeah, I'm trying to see where they have him on their actual player rankings. Is it worse? I'll well, say so they him at 350 on their player rankings, not their oh, predicted big board. <laughs> I, I don't see it based How's on – I updated? haven't watched him. <laughs> right. I mean, some guys have definitely moved. I know Leal, the other in defensive lineman, edge rusher sort of guy, he bumped way back, like 16 or 20 spots or whatever. Mm-hmm. But um, And so I know it's being updated, but yeah. <laughs> little uh, – yeah, I guess not a lot for Neil Farrell on the TDN board. I haven't watched him, but based on what he did at the senior ball, he certainly stood out. 
both him and then his teammate Ed Ingram both really stood out to me. Those LSU guys. I, 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 yeah, I, I like him a lot. And again, I I'm probably gonna have him as a top eight defensive tackle. I wouldn't say top five because um, there are certainly a lot of guys that I like that are you know already taken, gone earlier. But um, right. Farrell's a guy that I would say I'll end up a lot higher on than than most, as the the cool kids like to say. <laughs> so all right, so just to not take all of your time and go through all of these guys is there one more either edge rusher or interior defensive lineman at any point here on day three that really really just you outside of someone like Farrell? um I go ahead and go to, go go to edge defenders okay man yeah if uh if one of those guys is is there in, in round four and uh if they haven't taken an edge defender um mm-hmm. even if they have like walker malone and robinson are going mm-hmm. to be hard to like pass up on okay um i'll go with robinson so he was a high school quarterback he converted to wide receiver really? yeah oh wow and then, and, and then he, he was moved to pass rusher in, in 2020 um so he finished with like 11 and a half tackles for loss and six sacks and again this is a wide receiver convert not mm. wide receiver to db convert like he made the switch and you know six yeah, four wow. 256 pounds um explosive He's got some bend, burst, uh, change of direction. Um, and, again, he, he definitely showed up in one-on-ones too. But the guy that really stands out who uh, made, made himself some money in the, uh, in the game itself too, it was uh, D'Angelo Malone. Okay. And he kind of um, stands out to me because when you look at Chris Rumpf, he's on the lighter side. And Malone came in at 234 pounds. Okay. But the difference with him and Rumpf is the power. So mm-hmm. Malone was the guy that you see the quick first step, like the lower body twitch, um, kind of just how loose he was in his rushes. But there are multiple reps where he was able to just push um, tackles back into the, in the backfield. Braxton Jones, uh, rep against um, Southern Utah, Braxton, Braxton Jones stood out to me. We saw it in the game too. Um, he's got some length as well. So like if we're looking at that Chris Rumpf, mold and maybe like on the leaner side malone is very similar in that stature but to see that he has like the power um that he does like obviously you know when he showed at the the senior bowl he's a guy that i don't see him getting past day two and again i don't like to use those terms i don't see him getting past day two because we don't know how these teams are you know working but i i see like malone being a good round three guy if he was there in round four obviously they took chris rumpf uh with their um, fourth round pick He's a guy that I'm strongly considering, and I think he's going to be um, a really good uh, contributor right off the bat, especially in this league. Like he's a guy that I really like a lot. One of those two with Malone and Robinson to get him, to get them as a, as a reserve uh, pass rushers. You can throw them in there from like day one, and they're going to, mm-hmm. you know, get into the backfield. <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, I appreciate all the information, Gavino. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna ask you to go through all these guys. At some point, we'll do, you know, mock drafts and yada yada. But yeah, and I plan to start doing more like film breakdowns too. So again, awesome. you know, I'm over here, you know, spewing out like what I see, but <laughs> at the same time, it'll be a lot yeah. easier um, when you can actually see the the film and kind of see what I'm seeing mm. with these with these guys. Yeah, no, I can't wait. And and thank you again. Thank you for sharing. And thank you just for giving different names than we're used to hearing. All I heard about was Travis Jones, Jermaine Johnson, Travis Jones, Jermaine Johnson, rightfully so. But there are many other guys in this group. And it's also about fit, you know, history, what they showed on tape versus what they showed at the Senior Bowl. So thank you for bringing all that nuance, all this information, man. Uh, What are you up to these days? And who do you have winning the Super Bowl on Sunday? So, obviously, I'm watching a lot of film. I'm in the middle of the the draft guide, um, having getting some help with uh, Cole Topham. Um, mm-hmm. He should be on this show pretty soon. Yes. So he's he really just good dropped today. Receivers and corners. He is the guy to go. Um, we are hoping for 250 plus. Um, you know, a good representation of what we're going to drop is my 2020 draft guide um, mm-hmm. somewhere in the archives and it's more so just charger specific so like mm. i'll say like if they're a fit you know high medium low and then kind of just strengths weaknesses like a uh, one liner type of thing yeah. uh, so i'm doing that um but at the same time enjoying the off season by switching my focus to uh 
my Denver Nuggets. Um, so, you know, people nice. are wondering, like, why aren't you a Broncos fan? I lived in Aurora. <laughs> I went to Carmel, Carmel Anthony's first game. They've been my mm. game since then. So I'm only watching them so that, um, you know, when we get into the playoffs, they'll get bounced in the second round. So yeah, of course. I have all these high <laughs> expectations, just like most Chargers fans do. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> that's, what I, that's what I've been up to. Um, just that relaxing and, uh, you know, just getting ready for a fun – free agency and drafts. I'm really excited to see what the Chargers are going to do. But at the same time, hopefully I was able to um, drop some information on some of these uh, interior defenders that we're hearing about, you know, potential fits to the Chargers and edge defenders. And uh, again, I will be doing film reviews uh, here and there so you can get an idea of maybe the some that are flying under the radar. Awesome. Can't wait, man. And again, I got to ask you one more time. Who oh, you winning the Super Bowl. I'm going Bengals, and okay. uh, I actually had to do this with all the other uh, wire um, sites. And nice. I said, Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase are six and zero in the in the playoffs, dating back to, to college. And I, I, I said, proven winner, and I know again Chargers fans how they feel about Joe Burrow, but it's like <laughs> I got to admit, like I, I like the guy. And again, this oh, yeah. is one that like I love Justin Herbert coming out, but I don't know how you can't like you know Joe Burrow. Oh yeah, no, so, he, he was he was such an awesome prospect to watch. I I just kind of nicknamed him you know, the Terminator watching him because he just kept getting hit and he would get up. People would slam him down the sideline. Yeah. He'd just get up and be like, what? What did you do? And then go back and score another touchdown. Just I think this is a team, team that you look at what the Chargers could do. Uh, they, mm -hmm. I mean, with the Bengals, they went into free agency last year and yeah. they bolstered that defense. And look at that now. It's, it's paying off. So yeah. I think we're all hoping that the Chargers are able to do something uh, similar in that mold with uh, just bolstering the, the defense, adding like a uh, few pieces on offense and then we'll see where they go yep can't wait and it's a, it's a lot of trenches picks and signings on the way so then that makes you very happy yes. all right guys let me know what you guys thought of this sort of senior bowl interior defense lineman slash edge only mock draft honestly if they went this route and they signed a corner and a tackle not a bad off season even though we just limited ourselves to senior just bowl like C just like steven is with offensive linemen this is how course. i am like with uh <laughs> with the interior defensive lineman and edge, and I'd be very happy. So yes, we we have eleven picks, and I'm excited to watch you pick seven of them as as <laughs> trenches, guys. So uh, can't wait, guys. Thanks for watching. Take care. Enjoy the Super Bowl, and as always, bolt up.